guys, it's Mrs. Glenn. Welcome to the 3.7 average rate of change over an interval. So um, in this lesson, you're going to be learning about average rate of change, and that's the same thing as finding the slope of a line. So you can use uh, two different formulas, and actually they're the same formula, they just use different letters. So this first one is actually doing um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and all that means is the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. And we call slope m. And then on the right hand side you'll notice that it's the same setup with the minus signs and division except for now they're calling it f of b and minus f of a all over b minus a. And all that means is this is the second y value, y2, minus the first y value, y1, all divided by the second x value, which is also known as x2, minus the first x value. So it's exactly the same thing, they're just using the function of b and function of a. So the way you can think about it is, when you're reading um, a graph or you're reading a problem, the first point that they give to you, that will be called the a point. And then the second point they give to you, or the second point you get to in the graph, that's called the b point. Just like the alphabet, the first letter in the alphabet is A, and the second letter in the alphabet is B. So this is where they're coming up with A and B. This is the second uh, Y value, first Y value, second X value, first X value. And we could also use the slope formula to find the average rate of change over an interval. So they might tell you, like, between A and B, what is the average rate of change? And so you would just use one of these formulas. Either formula is fine. Um, you just have to make sure that you have it in the correct order, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so Matthew is jumping off the diving board at a YMCA pool. His height is modeled by the quadratic function h of t equals negative t squared plus 2t plus 4, where h of t represents the height above water in feet, and t represents the time after jumping in seconds. Determine the average rate of change for the intervals a, b, b, c, c, d. All right, so... Again, you're going to look at these, and you're going from the second point to the first point. So this first y value is 5, and it goes down to 4. So that's going to be 5 minus 4. And your x value from the second point is 1, and from the first point is 0. So that's 1 minus 0. So you just subtract and divide. So 5 minus 4 is 1, 1 minus 0 is 1, and so your slope for a to B is 1. And then from B to C, same thing, you're going from the second point first to the um, second point to the first point. So this is 4, 5, so you're going 4 minus 5, let me change my color, 4 minus 5, and this X value is 2, and we're going back to 1. So this turns into 1 over 1 again negative 1 over 1, which means we have a negative 1 slope. And that makes sense because if you look at the line, this line was going up, so it's a positive slope. This line's going down, so it should be a negative slope. So we're good with that. Then from C to D, so second point again, this one gives you what the value is, so it's 3.24. And we're going back to 2, where C is, so minus 2. Oh, my, I'm sorry. That's the x value. Let's just move that. Let's see if it'll let me move it. All right, we'll move it over here. So that's the x value. And your y value, this is 0. And c is 4. So on the top, you get negative 4. On the bottom, you get 1.24. And you can put that in your calculator if you want to and divide it. Give me one second. So that's negative 4 divided by 1.24, and that's 3.225, so we'll say 3.23. Wait, that should not be 4 divided by 1.24. Just double checking. Yep, okay, that's right. So negative 3.23. Three will round to the nearest hundredth place. And then down here it says compare Matthew's average rate of change over the interval from A to B 
with his average rate of change from over the interval of B to C. So we're looking at A to B average rate of change from and then looking at B to C. So we can tell that right away the it was the same amount of slope, same amount of change, however, one was positive and one was negative. So it says, what does this represent in real life? Well, remember, he's diving off the diving board. So this must be where he is jumping off the board. between interval A and B. And then from C, uh, B to C, he must be diving into the, like starting to dive in the water. And uh, from B to C, he is starting, so he's not going into the water yet, but he's starting to dive towards the water. All right, suppose the cost of producing x tablets is defined by c of x equals 200 plus 10x plus 0.2x squared, where x represents the number of tablets produced, the tab table below represents the function, which interval represents the greatest change, greatest rate of change. All right, so we have um, several different intervals. So we should look at the y values and see what the biggest rate of change is. So we need to first do 480 minus 395. Remember, it's the second point minus the first. And then this is your y value. Remember, anytime it's c of x, that's also known as the y, or f of x, or g of x, or anything letter of x, that's the y value. And then 20 minus 15, because we're going from the second point to the first point. So 480 minus 395 is 85. And then 20 minus 15 is 5. So you have to divide your 85 by 5, and you get 17. And then we're going to do the next interval, which is 575 minus 480. Twenty-five minus 20. So 575 minus 480 is 95. So we have a bigger number on top this time than the last one. And 25 minus 20 is 5 again. And you divide that, and you get 19. So, so far, this one is the biggest interval, but we're not sure yet. We have to keep going. So then we have 575 to 680. So we have 680 minus 575. And we're doing 30 minus 25 again. So our bottom number is 5 once more. And then we have 680 minus 575, which is 105. I see a pattern here, the x value is increasing. So maybe it's the last interval, what do you guys think? So this turns into 21. And the last one would be 680 to 795. So 795 minus 680, we do the second point first. And 35 minus 30 again is just five. So I wonder if this is going to be 115. 795 minus 680, 115, because this is increasing by 10 each time. That's why I said 115. And then over 5 again, so this should be 23. Yep. All right, so the last one is the largest interval, so between uh, 680 and 795. So you would write that like this, 680. 795, or between, actually, you know what, we do the y value, or the x value. So that would be 30 to 35. And it's not asking for anything else, so that's the greatest rate of change is the last one. And that's it. Go Seahawks. Woo!